suppose we have this uh, alcohol uh, as a substrate and we are carrying out dehydration reaction we are using uh, we are using s2so4 and we are using heat now let's get to the mechanism step by step step number 1 is protonation step number 2 is removal of water i'm showing here straight away right one step step number 1 over step number 2 over and step number 3 and before we do step number 3 we have to look if there can be rearrangement and if we can stabilize this carbocation now they we can obviously stabilize this carbocation because this carbocation is 1 degree if we do 1 to hydride shift carbocation will come on this carbon and that will become 2 degree so let's do 1 to hydride shift and the rearranged carbocation would look like this previously it has 2 alpha hydrogen now it has 4 alpha hydrogen so we have stabilized this carbocation can we further stabilize this carbocation yes we can if we do once again 1 2 hydride shift then this plus charge will come on 3 degree carbon and that will make this half carbocation yet that will bring yet more stability to the carbocation so this is the final most stable carbocation as it has 7 alpha hydrogen previously it had 2 next it had 4 and now it has 7 so the stability has been enhanced can you further stabilize it? No, we can't further stabilize it because whatever you do, either it will make 1 degree carbocation or it will make 2 degree carbocation. So this is the most stable possible carbocation. Now let's move to third step. Then a base will come and abstract hydrogen. So this base can abstract hydrogen from where? There are two kind of possibility. You have one and these two are same kind of methyl group, similar. Both methyl, both methyl attached to this C+. So there are two possible sites. If you do it from C1, then the product would have a alkene that would look like this. Let's count the number of alpha hydrogen. There are three alpha hydrogens here, two here, altogether five. If base abstract from C1 position, then we'll have a more good looking alkene with more number of alpha hydrogen 3 3 3 9 here 5 you decide which one is more stable now I have done enough of uh, writing the mechanism now you are grown up now the fourth problem should be solved all by yourself i am going to give only the final product and you should not have any problem in getting the final product so you don't see the answer straight away pause the video get your answer and then match your answer and boost your morale Now, this question must be solved all by yourself. If you can solve this problem correctly, then you'll have no trouble in solving any, any question of dehydration. The product in this case would be this. Tell me if you can get it. Question number 6. Question number 6 we will solve together. Then question number 7 you'll solve alone. Now let's do question number 6 and you can try it yourself and then check your answer. You should try yourself and then check your answer instead of keep just keep watching. Just watching will not help you. So let's do question number 6. Let's do step by step. There are three easy steps to get the product. Step number 1 is protonation. simple step number two is removal of water molecule if you remove water molecule you'll get a plus charge like this 
Now, before going to step number three, you have to see if you can stabilize the system by stabilizing the plus charge or stabilizing the or, or reducing the strain in the ring. Now, there are two things that can happen here. One of the thing is you go on stabilizing the plus charge. If you do a one two hydride shift, this carbon is making three bond. The fourth bond is with hydrogen. So this carbon has a hydrogen. If you remove, if you do migration of that hydrogen, then the plus charge will come on a three degree carbon. And you'll get a stable plus charge. And then you can go for the third step of acid base reaction. And you can get a alkene. Like this. This will be one of the accepted possible product. No problem. May not be the major product. Let's see the another possibility. Now in this case, when I taught you migration, I also taught you ring expansion. And when I taught you that, I told you whenever you have a possibility of 3 member ring going to 4 member ring or a 4 member ring going to 5 member ring or a 5 member ring going to a 6 member ring or a 7 member ring going to a 6 member ring that will happen always if there is no if if if, if, if there is other possibility like aromaticity generation or c double bond o formation then it's a different thing but in normal circumstances when you give a opportunity for ring expansion or in case of seven member ring ring contraction then that always and always occur because this ring is is in a strain and because of that strain there are five carbons in the ring who are suffering so if you mitigate that strain or if you reduce or if you nullify if you remove off that strain by making it a six member ring then all of them will be happy and that can be done by ring expansion ring expansion is just similar to hydride shift where you have a transfer of electron as such every reaction is electron transfer what happens is this orbital is empty having plus charge so the bond when you start to shift electron of this bond into this orbital then electronic density from here would be removed off and electronic density between these two carbon will start to increase so gradually electronic density here will come out and start filling the empty orbital and a bond will start to be formed between this carbon and this carbon so gradually this bond would be broken and this bond will be strengthened and when this bond is completely broken this bond is completely formed and now this carbon is has is having one less bond so this carbon will develop plus charge and the plus charge from this carbon will be removed off as it has formed one new bond so that's how ring expansion happens and to write it properly this is a six member ring having six carbon and a plus charge is on any one of the carbon all carbon are symmetrical same right so this is how you can expand the ring and you can reduce the strain on the carbon so this is one of the another path that can happen instead of one two hydride shift you can have ring expansion so we had this intermediate and these are the two possible paths you can go to and once you have this plus charge now the third step can occur a base can come abstract the hydrogen and give us a final alkene so these are the two possible alkenes that can happen if you look here this, this is a six member ring a six member ring has a bond angle of 120 degree internal bond angle and this is sp2 hybridized carbon internal in sp2 hybridized carbon in sp2 hybridization of carbon the bond angle is 120 degree so the angle strain here is zero if you look here the internal angle of a five member ring is 108 degree and the bond angle in sp2 hybridization is 120 degree so there is a strain of 12 degree on two carbons so th th this is a rule of thumb when you have a possibility of making a six member ring from a five member ring you always go in that direction now this is not maths as such i can't tell you that this is this x amount of per percentage more stable than this this is a analytical dealing and this is how we deal with reactions in organic chemistry you know certain rules and you play by that rules so i'm telling you one rule when you have a possibility from moving on from five member ring to six member ring you do that but this is going to be the major product because you have a six member ring here fine